My name's Ilan and I love sound. And I've been on this uh, journey after an experience that has had me uh, look at sound and hear sound in a new way. And it's led me on this journey, on this path of exploring how we can utilize sound in a more impactful way as a tool to affect our mind and body and spirit. And through that path, I uh, found that the aspect of spatialization seemed to be very significant. I found that sound in space has certain properties that I think are untapped and unexplored as far as the potential for how we relate to sound and how we can use it therapeutically and for unfolding consciousness and a dimensional shift, as I like to call it. So I'm not so great with words and science and in-depth, intricate networks of information. So I like pictures. So I have a slideshow here, and I'm just going to go through these pictures, and pictures are going to tell the story, and I'll just kind of go with it. So I became fascinated with these different aspects of sound, and they all kind of coalesced into the evolution of what I've been doing of late. Uh, math, universal math, sacred geometry, just the natural order of how things work together from a mathematical perspective that we find in nature is apparent in music and geometry and vibration, and that's played a huge role. Ancient tuning systems, the way that sound can be arranged in different intervals with different frequencies that evoke an emotion or a mood, is fascinating. The psychoacoustics, how our sound, how, how sound is processed, how one sound hits one ear and there's a difference between the time that it hits another ear and that's decoded into some type of information about the position as well as other things. Pure tones, vibrational healing is popular. We understand that certain tones can vibrate molecules and cells and systems and there's a field of sound therapy and sound healing uh, that has a lot to do with how frequencies impact matter and shape matter in a therapeutic way. Bowls, crystal bowls, tuning forks, love it. Rhythmic, uh, melodic rhythm, shamanic drumming. All these aspects of, of sound have just come together uh, on the kind of platform of spatialization for me and soon for you. So uh, the core aspect of spatialization has to do with this uh, technology, ambisonics. In short, Amazonics was developed as a way to capture a sound field and reproduce it over a spherical array of speakers. It never gained commercial popularity, stayed in academic environments, and now is resurfacing as the uh, best solution for immersive media, VR, uh, 360 video, etc. And it has provided a means for uh, really phenomenal sound experiences in this realm. So, Getting into Amazonics led me on this path to understand uh, how, to, how to do it. You know, it was a fragmented uh, technology. So this is in San Francisco, and we started to build uh, systems uh, for Amazonic playback, uh, including uh, exploring software. How can we spatialize the sound uh, in a way that's meaningful and we can direct sound at will creatively and intentionally and uh, with intention. And that led to the evolution of a very dear project to my heart called Envelop. This is in San Francisco. Uh, we have two systems where we've taken this Amazonics technology and we've created these environments. On the bottom is our mobile system for events and festivals. That is the uh, uh, San Francisco, our home base, where we have a lab, performance space, and venue where we can uh, work with the community, work with artists, work with developers, and uh, researchers on this technology, uh, Ambisonics. And then we also created an open source uh, software environment to encourage uh, musicians and artists and composers to create content in this format. Uh, and so this is Envelop. And uh, our logo there, the Envelop logo, it's not the uh, flower of life as it, uh, people presume. Uh, it's different, and soon we'll get to that, but uh, that's Envelop. So, that kind of wasn't enough, though. I got really interested in really understanding what's happening with sound in space. How are vibrations occurring in space? We think of vibrations as, as, a, as, a, as a wave on an oscilloscope and, 
and uh, stereo is two-dimensional, but often we don't think about how sound is occurring in space. So here's just one little sample. Uh, this is water being vibrated by very, very high frequencies, right? And you see how uh, the geometry in the water and the shape, the physical three-dimensional shape of the water is being impacted by the nature of the vibration. Actually, the, the resonant frequency of this water uh, and its harmonics is what you're seeing. So then you look at um, an oscilloscope, uh, and this has a lot to do with the difference tones between sounds. And uh, once again, there's some really interesting geometry that comes out of this. Now it's kind of half two-dimensional, half three-dimensional, but if you just kind of like let yourself get into it, you can realize that there's a lot going on in space with sound that's not just two-dimensional. So we need to break out of this two-dimensional uh, uh, concept in relationship to sound. So really very beautiful. So that's just sound, just, just, just pure tones, uh, sets of pure tones coming into an oscilloscope, creating these beautiful patterns. Uh, and uh, I love it. Okay, so how are we using that? How is that, that, that occurring in the world? So what I've uh, been exploring is uh, that actual aspect of spatial audio and auditory tracking and how it's affecting our brain and how it's uh, having an impact. And um, this bottom graph here is actually a plot of taking the same ideas of sound and space and using an ambisonic array to manipulate the energy of different sound positions to actually uh, create different geometries and really go back to this passion for geometry and sound and space and actually manipulate sound fields uh, with geometric principles in mind. Um, and so there's something esoteric and abstract about that that will come back in shortly. But I wanted to show you how we've been doing this, and this is similar to the work at uh, the Monroe Institute, which I think was uh, uh, you know, relatively the same time. But what this is, this is just taking a sound and mapping it in space. This is just a, a slice, so you're looking at the sound that is moving around. And then over here, I'll explain, these are the uh, EEG plots of how uh, people are responding and reacting to simply sound in motion, moving sound, the experience of auditory tracking, the mechanism that is happening when we are paying attention to where sound is in space, intentionally. So, oh wait, back. No. Is there a play button on that? Potentially. So what you'll see is, you'll see the energy moving around in space and it's moving to match certain brainwave patterns. So the hertz, the frequency is translated spatially. So it's not necessarily just a spatial angle modulation, but it's also the spatial tracking of the sound at certain frequencies. And so the EEG output of the EEG plots, we're seeing a really cool trend uh, that looks a lot but it looks really similar to uh, a meditative uh, experience or a deep transcendent experience. Uh, for one, on the top, you're having the faster brain waves, the um, beta, gamma uh, uh, decreasing, and you're seeing the slower waves, the delta and the theta, and especially theta, which is very interesting and uh, correlates to a hypnagogic or um, kind of a mid-consciousness state between sleeping and wakefulness, which is, uh, has a lot of profound implications. Now, of course, this is um, not definitive. It's not an exact uh, indication of what's going on, but it is very similar and uh, really represents what people are feeling subjectively. So, um, and there's, I've got tons of these. It just keeps showing up. We're seeing this, this pattern that's just a result of people tracking their sound. Um, next. So this is how people are responding um, and using spatialization uh, to create a meditative experience. Uh, these are uh, quotes from actually real world experiences in workplace environments, corporate settings. 
And what they're saying is pretty interesting for the context of a workplace environment. I feel very perceptive and in a heightened state of awareness. Uh, by the end, I felt very aware of my surrounding, like a superhero using the powers for the first time. I felt like a fog had been lifted. Um, I feel connected and content, present in the moment. It's, it's, it's great, and it's not from a meditation practice per se, it's from a listening experience. So there's lots of overlaps, but in fact, the context, the set and setting is different. It's a place people go to have a listening experience, and they're having these uh, 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 subjective reports that sound a lot like deep meditation practices. Um, so here's a few other examples. This is uh, some big companies where we're doing this uh, exact thing. We're creating this uh, uh, spatial, spatial modulations that are synchronized to impact certain brainwave frequencies, and people are uh, responding very well. And then this is where the iteration is going. Uh, the latest, ex uh, latest part of this is these uh, mobile soundproof chambers. Uh, and you can see there's these uh, little speakers here. So implement implementing the Amazonics technology in a space that can be deployed uh, in different environments. Uh, so the advantage or the excitement of this is really, it's like, how does this live in the world? What makes sense for creating these sound spaces or meditative uh, environments using multimedia, multi-sensory immersion, using biosensors? How does it actually occur in the world? Um, uh, I think it's a, I think it's a worthy question. I mean, the, the, the phenomenology, the set and setting, uh, I think deserves attention as well as the technology, the implications, etc. So this is really exciting work as well. Um, so here, back to uh, something a little bit more abstract and, and been this really exciting drive that's, that's really pulled me through all of this. Um, see, back to this picture here, we see the uh, Amazonic Array. This is uh, built based on the cube octahedron. Each, uh, each speaker is based on that geometry, uh, which relates to a toroidal field. And then back to these um, oscilloscope images. So if you see once again, what does that look like to you? It's a toroidal field. So this is where the work is really going. And the spatialization as an entrainment technique or a presencing tool is very exciting. But when we're looking at how we're creating energetic spaces, uh, and what I, uh, I first called this uh, creation uh, in the Netherlands, uh, the transdimensional portal, I got named the TDP, and it was kind of just a, uh, you know, just a whim, but I don't know, there's something there. There really is, and so um, that is uh, another talk. And where it's going is uh, to create these spaces, once again, that are beautiful, that are well-designed, that become a part of society, become a part of cities, become a part of uh, workplace environments that uh, integrate Amazonic technology as well as different immersive uh, medias, uh, all based on the impetus to calm the mind, to open up new, new, new aspects of awareness, to become more in touch with ourselves, to be more connected with others, and to just uh, live a more fulfilled path, whatever that looks like, whether it is deep meditation or it is just making money, whatever that looks like, create spaces that are dedicated to helping you do that and wherever you are at in your life. Um, and the tech with that too, creating uh, feedback loops with uh, the media and the software and the sensors so that we can work with uh, experts in the field, neuroscientists, gurus, doctors, and create a network of spaces that implements this technology that is guided by the experts in the field so we can grow together better. Thank you very much.